Hey guys, welcome back to the AJ Analysis channel where unfortunately for Manchester United fans we do have another bit of a disappointing video really, talking about United's 3-2 loss to Arsenal at the Emirates. So before we actually get into the analysis, I want to quickly talk to you guys about the One Football app because for me it is the only football app that you need on your device to get basically everything you need to do with football, whether it's team news, transfer news, player statistics, league tables, upcoming fixtures, match highlights for leagues like the Serie A, even live matches in the Serie A. For example, this weekend we've got Atalanta against Sampdoria, which you can watch live on the app at literally zero cost. If you want to check it out for yourself, then make sure to either use the link in the description down below or scan the QR code, which will be on screen now, to download the OneFootball app. So before we get into the video, I just wanted to quickly kind of briefly talk about Eric Ten Hag because a lot of United fans are reacting quite neg negatively, sorry, to the result. Just a bit of context, really. United were without their best right back in Dallow, their best midfielder in Casemiro, the best striker in Veghorst, one of their best wingers in Jaden Sancho, and they still took the best team in England all the way to the 90th minute. So I think it's important to just kind of keep that in mind. Eric Ten Hag is doing a brilliant job and is massively overachieving with this team. Um, so cut him some slack a little bit, right? United played in midweek, Arsenal didn't. United off the, off the back of a really difficult week, in fact, actually, when Arsenal have had some time off. So cut Eric Ten Hag some slacker, right? He took Arsenal all the way to the 90th minute. And that's what we're going to talk about in today's video, how they've done that. But ultimately, there were some clear quality issues in this Manchester United side compared to Arsenal. There is a clear difference in quality. One team... And one set of players is a lot better than the other. And we saw that in this game. So we are going to start by talking about what Manchester United looked to do when they had the ball. And as you would expect, Arsenal put them under a lot of pressure. And Arsenal set up exactly how I would have expected in terms of the shape of their press. Although it was reversed in kind of what side they pressed on. However, what we saw from Arsenal was a front two pressing system like this. With one of the wingers moving inside up alongside Nketiah. Often Bakayo Saka doing it. Odegaard behind them. Uh, Martinelli up high on the left. Ben White up high on the right, and then Arsenal basically formed a back three and went man for man from there. So let's just organise this quickly like this. This was Arsenal's pressing shape. And it's the shape that I suggested that they would use in my tactical preview of the game. And as I suggested, United found it really difficult to play through this press because for me they just used the wrong shape to approach it. And the problem that United have here is Arsenal are man for man everywhere. So we can see there's not really anywhere that they can play to. The other problem is David De Gea in goal had an awful game. Um, I'm aware some of you guys aren't going to be happy with that. I'm aware there's a lot of David De Gea fans. I will just say, De Gea is a wonderful goalkeeper. He's been brilliant for Manchester United for a long time. But ultimately, he did do some things which cost United in this game. Now, people will talk about his late save, which was absolutely fantastic. We know he has that sort of save in his locker. But for too much of this game, he put United on the back foot. And... His play out from the back simply isn't good enough. His distribution has improved this season, but it still isn't good enough. And what was more annoying about it is United did have the tactical solution to try and play through this press. Well, there were often situations where we saw Luke Shaw moving really narrow, dragging Ben White in. This then creates the room for either Bruno Fernandes or Christian Eriksen or Marcus Rashford to drop into this space. De Gea just couldn't find him with his passing. He's sticking them out for throw-ins. Um, so that was putting United on the back foot and it made it really difficult for United to play out from the press. As a result, Arsenal were winning it in some decent areas high up the pitch and United were just about able to recover the ball to stop them conceding from these situations. But United simply just weren't really good enough at playing through the press. So they didn't turn this into any transitions, but they weren't able to isolate Rashford in these areas from playing through. And Arsenal defended it really well. However, there were still some spells when United had the ball. So when United had more sustained possession, which they did for decent periods of this game, because Arsenal were a bit sloppy in possession at times, giving United this platform to build some possession. Uh, but problem was for United that Arsenal had a really good defensive structure. We saw Partey and Xhaka performing a double pivot. Odegaard were pushing up alongside Nketiah. And then Saka and Martinelli defended much narrower than what I expected and much deeper, creating a flat 4-4-2 shape, essentially. And... There's going to be some key problems caused by this. Now, one of the problems is that Odegaard and Nketiah didn't press particularly high, with giving the centre-backs time, but therefore stopping the two central midfielders from getting on the ball. Now, when this is happening, as a Manchester United player, you have to make movements off the ball. Eriksen is good at dragging players out of position to leave room for McTominay. The problem was McTominay was playing hide-and-seek with the ball, and he, he was not seeking, he was the hider. Constantly just standing behind Arsenal players and McTominay's actually had a decent season, particularly early on in the season. He played a big role in the team, even in the earlier win against Arsenal. In this game though, he just showed that he's no good in this role. He just doesn't know how to play this role in possession. We could see that even at times when he did get himself free into positions to receive the ball, 
The other players around him clearly don't trust him on the ball. There were situations where he could have received and the players just aren't passing to him when I know that they would have for Casemiro. So there is clearly just a technical issue here in the sense McTominay just isn't good at football. Or so, No, I worded that horribly. McTominay isn't as good at football as what someone like Casemiro is. And that causes a problem when one of your midfielders is really incapable of getting on the ball against a quite a stubborn and probably the best defensive side in the Premier League apart from Newcastle. So that was a problem. United couldn't use that aspect of getting on the ball because McTominay weren't doing it. Uh, the other problem was out wide. And what we can see is that United have a 5 versus 4 here. With wan pushing quite high and Anthony moving a little narrower than what he was in, uh, than what he has done most of the season. Down this left-hand side, United had some good combinations. Bruno Fernandes and Marcus Rashford are two quality players. Playing this close to each other means that they are able to get on the ball, uh, link the play with each other, and Marcus Rashford was a threat throughout the game. Of course, he scored that brilliant goal where he comes inside, puts United into the lead with a brilliant finish from distance. Rashford was bright and always a threat, and good link-up player Bruno Fernandes. The problem on the other side is that with wan Saka providing your width, he is not a great one versus one dribbler up against Zinchenko. Yes, he can carry the ball forward. He's quite good with his progressive dribbling. But in the final third, he isn't the sort of player which is going to beat a man and then put in a pinpoint cross of Veghorst to attack. And down his right-hand side, United had the balance in terms of their shape. But again, there's a personnel issue and a squad depth issue in the sense that wan just wasn't good enough in this game. He's played well recently, but wasn't up to scratch in this game. And then, as a result, Anthony also struggled because he wasn't getting that supply. There were times when wan Saka was narrower and Anthony was wider. Anthony looked a bit more front-footed than what he has done in recent games. He looked like he was getting at his man a bit more. But again, just a lack of end product, a lack of link play with wan Saka meant that United were pretty toothless. I know they scored two goals, but one comes from an absolute moment of magic from Marcus Rashford. The other comes from a corner for Lissandra Martinez. And United were toothless going forward, lacked a bit of creativity, lacked any quality down the right-hand side, a lack of quality in midfield with McTominay not really controlling the game. It meant that they were a bit toothless and Arsenal defended the whole situation pretty easily. Before we continue with the analysis, I want to talk to you guys about JerseyFIFA.com, the home of all of the greatest football kits. Whether that's the latest home shirts, the latest away shirts, tracksuits or even retro kits, Jersey FIFA has a bit of everything. There really is something for everyone, so if you are interested, then make sure to use the link in the description down below and head to JerseyFIFA.com. Now of course it is time to talk about what Arsenal looked to do on the ball and... From playing through the press to creating in the final third, Arsenal just looked a lot better. They looked far more established. And I think that's what you expect when you are comparing a manager six months in the job compared to three years in the job. This Arsenal side is really well drilled and I was really impressed with their performance. But there were problems with the United system. United looked to press reasonably high up the pitch. It wasn't exactly an intense press, but they, did, they were there in the sense of presence. The problem is they used their usual pressing structure, with Anthony moving inside between the winger, uh, the fullback and centre back, and Rashford doing the same on the other side. But then the fullbacks aren't coming high and joining that press. So whereas at Arsenal, when they were pressing, were essentially four versus four, pushing a fullback up and a winger up, United couldn't create the same situations. And when you're playing against one of the best distributing goalkeepers in the Premier League, they're going to find it very easy to play through your press. And we saw that time and time again, with Ramsdale just clipping passes either out to Zinchenko on the left hand side or out to Ben White on the right-hand side. This then gave Arsenal plenty of room. They've taken three United players out of the game. They now have the room to step forward, and what that's going to do, obviously you can't just let a player step forward, it's going to drag someone like Bruno Fernandes out, which then means you can go inside, which then drags someone else out, which then means you can progress the ball, and Arsenal were able to get at the United defence in that way. However, Varane and Lissandra Martinez actually defended really well in these positions. However, because of this ease of playing through the press, Arsenal did have a lot of sustained possession. So as I said there, Arsenal had a good amount of sustained possession. The problem was for me in these situations that there was a structural issue with what Manchester United looked to do. Whereas Arsenal had a front two and then everyone else kind of sat off in their 4-4-2 defensive shape, United kept three players pretty high up the pitch. I don't know if this was to apply pressure on the ball or to try and threaten on the counter-attack, which we know United are pretty good at, so that might have been the idea from Ten Hag. But the problem was it, is it made Anthony and Rashford a little bit ineffective because they weren't... Uh, engaging in a super high press. This wasn't a super intense display where they're putting players under pressure constantly. And what this meant was that Arsenal kind of had time here, but also these United players were just kind of in the middle of nowhere. I think at times Anthony was meant to be tucking in on Zinchenko, but Zinchenko done a really good job of like evading that pressure. Uh, that pressure. And for me, Zinchenko was the best player on the pitch. He was absolutely brilliant and instrumental to everything that Arsenal done well. But Arsenal did find it too easy to build the ball down the centre of the pitch 
taking out that front three. And then from here, they've then got Zinchenko, Partey, Odegaard and Xhaka up against Bruno Fernandes, McTominay and Christian Eriksen. Now, these three are in midfield are going to work hard. But Eriksen isn't a tenacious player. He's not going to win a lot of duels. And McTominay doesn't have the reading of the play, which some other players do. So physically, he wins a lot of his duels, but he doesn't always read the play and read the situation. So his positioning isn't always good. And with McTominay not being as good as Casemiro, it also exposed some of Eriksen's flaws defensively as well. And Arsenal were able to progress the ball down the centre of the pitch, but also they were able to progress the ball out wide as well. We also saw Granit Xhaka dropping deep on his left-hand side, getting the ball, because again, with these United wingers being really narrow but not engaging the ball, it left room outside of the United midfield. Xhaka was dropping into these areas all match long, and what this then means is that he can get the ball to Martinelli, and I found the Martinelli versus wan Bissaka battle really, really interesting. We know wan is a very good one versus one defender, but we know Martinelli is very good at dribbling. I wouldn't really say either of them particularly came out on top. wan nearly always got the tackle in stop Martinelli. However, he was doing it late. Martinelli was getting the ball here and just walking up to wan constantly kind of forcing him backwards. Then wan would eventually make the tackle. So wan is winning the duel but Martinelli is very much gaining the territory, so that was quite an interesting battle. Um, the other problem for United was if we look at it from a numerical point of view, the wingers have been, the forwards have been bypassed too easily, the midfield have been outnumbered. To be fair, Veghorst did try and get back in, and he actually done some really good defensive work, but at the end of the day, he's a striker. He couldn't do that all the time. So when United were getting outnumbered, the problem that they then had was that their defence is made up of four players, whereas the Arsenal attack is made up of five. And the key difference is the players that are making up the Arsenal 5. Now, United had a front 5 when they were attacking. But if you remember United's right-hand side, it was wan wide with Anthony in the pocket. Uh, Odegaard in the pocket is much better than Anthony in the pocket. And Saka out wide is astronomically clear of Aaron wan as an isolation winger. And this caused problems for United all game long. All game long. So, say Arsenal had the ball deep. Odegaard could make a forward movement, which drags Shaw deeper. Because again, United are outnumbered. So then Saka can get the ball and attack the defence. Or Shaw could be caught wide and then the ball can go inside to Odegaard. We saw the same more so on the other side of the pitch. The ball going into Granite Jacket in these areas where wan has been dragged wide. Or wan has tucked narrow, which means Martinelli can get the ball. Arsenal were really good in these wide areas. And this was where the game was won and lost. Um, Saka on the right-hand side in particular. We often talk about him as one of the best young players in the world. He's not. He's not. He's one of the best players in the world. The word young doesn't come into it. He is just one of the best players in the world of football currently. His decision making for such a young player and also just his presence is absolutely incredible. Luke Shaw was terrified of him. I actually think Luke Shaw done a pretty good job defensively considering the situation. Saka didn't really beat him too many times. But he was terrified of Saka. And that is incredible for a young player like Saka to have that. The problem United had was that now Christian Eriksen was exposed. So we know what Odegaard's going to do. He's going to come into these pockets, and United were very wary of Odegaard, unsurprisingly. So even McTominay would come all the way across. And obviously, from this situation, Saka wanted to come inside onto his left foot. This is where United had the problem with Christian Eriksen. Eriksen doesn't defend with tenacity. Yes, he's okay at reading the play, but he doesn't snap into tackles and put pressure on the player on the ball. And for that goal, it is too easy for Saka to come inside and bend the ball into the far post. And... Also, the ability to slip passes into Odegaard and Ketia. Arsenal looked really good going forward. Arsenal were really impressive and they did deserve their win. However, if I was Ten Hag, I would be absolutely fuming. Because all of the goals for me come from some sort of individual error. The first goal, we've got United trying to play out from the back with David De Gea and wan -Bissaka. It just doesn't go very well at all. Two of them technically not good enough. And then the ball comes in towards the back post. Aaron wan -Bissaka, awful. Really, really good lately. I've been really impressed by his performances. He's done a great job. His attitude has been brilliant. But one weakness that I've always criticised him for is defending his back post. And we saw it for the first goal. It simply wasn't good enough. Then we've got that second goal where Eriksen doesn't defend well enough. He makes it far too easy for Saka to come inside onto his left foot. And then from there, I think... Personally, I think De Gea is a little bit slow to get down. Let me know what you think. Uh, maybe I'm being a bit harsh on that one. Personally, I think he is a little bit slow getting there. But... Perhaps not, perhaps not. Let me know what you think. And then the third goal, again, it just comes from United's... It's almost not an individual error as such. But because United were making so many individual errors leading up to it. De Gea is losing the ball. McTominay is losing the ball. wan is losing the ball. Fernandez, Anthony, whoever. 
Because United keep losing the ball, keep giving the possession back to Arsenal. Arsenal keep building the pressure, and when you do that against a good side like this, Arsenal will eventually make you pay, and unfortunately for United, it's now the second game in a row where they're conceded in the 90th minute plus, simply because they didn't really have the game management to see the game out. Again, if we kind of look at Ten Hag, you can point fingers at him. There's a clear squad depth issue here. If you look at the bench, who did United have to bring on to change the game? Fred and Garnacho. They're not players that are going to come on and change the game in the way which United needed in this particular match. United needed some sustained possession, someone who could get on the ball and control the tempo. They didn't have that. So Ten Hag needs to be backed in the market to give him the players that he needs for these sort of games. Ultimately, I thought United put up a good battle. I thought they played pretty well. I thought they would be out of the game much earlier than what they were. So fair play to Ten Hag. But also, a lot of credit to Arteta. The squad that he has built here, the turnaround that we've seen over the past couple of seasons... This Arsenal side is fantastic, and City are going to have to be nearly perfect to stop them. They really are very, very sound in almost every area of the game, and that's pretty impressive. It's going to take a lot to stop them, but let me know what you think in the comments down below. Do you think Arsenal will go on to win the Premier League? Do you think Ten Hag got anything wrong? Do you think it was more individual errors from the Manchester United players? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you have enjoyed the video, and as always, I will see you in the next one.